If you ever wanted to get started playing Magic Arena, I'll tell you what, this past Thursday, March 17, 2022, is probably the nail in the coffin to tell you that you absolutely should not, and you should be cutting your losses and moving to Magic the Gathering online to play Standard. I mean, forget Historic, forget Alchemy. They're not even that great anyway. Take it from someone who's played those formats as well. Magic Arena is officially dead thanks to the Magic Economy stream that happened on March the 17th. I wanted to use this video to go over the broad details and the fine details and actually talk about a couple of pros that they talked about in terms of how they're moving forward with the um, client in general, but I'm not sure if those outweigh it. It might be enough for those enfranchised players that are already very deep in it to keep going, and it might be something to look forward to in terms of a carrot to follow. But in general, I think right now you should not be playing Arena and Wizards should be doing better. And we're going to talk about that. So let's get right into it. What am I talking about? The economy itself is something that's, well, managed by these two currencies right here. You have gold and you have gems. Now, the gold is the in-game currency. So you're going to get paid out by this from wins uh, in the leagues. You're going to use this to buy various packs and whatnot. It's the in-game currency, and it's similar to play points on Magic Online. You have the gems, which are then equivalent to tickets on Magic Online. It, not really in the good ways, but in the bad ways. You pay money to directly get gems, and then you really get paid out for wins in gold. So a relatively basic economy. If any of you have played mobile games or a, a really almost any big massive uh, multiplayer online game, you'll have a system that's a two-factor or two-step economy system like this. Historically, it's been bad the not the currencies itself but the way that they've handled pricing and how you use these to pay out into packs and cards and everything it, it's not been great and this past economy stream was supposed to be something that helped improve that give players a better light into what's going on and what to look forward to well realistically there's not much to look forward to if you look at this youtube video right here let's just look at the ratio 11.7k views only 180 likes. I'm one of the people that disliked it, and this is probably one of the primary reasons or primary uh, backs, uh, backups for why YouTube removed the dislike counter, because this video got ratioed. I'm telling you, if Twitch could ratio this thing, it got ratioed. Everyone does not like this. Let's see what they talked about in this one hour long stream. Notably, the players are obviously angry. For many of you on Magic Twitter, you already know what's going on. For those of you that don't really follow Magic social media or what's going on in terms of these news, let's dive right into it. You're probably going to be pretty upset as well. But again, near the end of the video, thanks to the algorithm, I'm going to be talking about the negatives first and the pros at the end of the video. And there's going to be some chapters down below. So let's do that first. This game is really appealing to the whales of the Magic game. Whales are a gaming term, or is a gaming term, sorry, for a type of gamer that spends abhorrent amounts of money on a singular game, right? And obviously Magic Arena is going to appeal to that because if you buy a lot of packs, if you buy a lot of in-game items, you get rewarded with more packs, more currency, you just, you just buy back into it. There's a lot of things you get for spending a lot of money. Look at the higher level rewards as well. If you spend more money on more packs, you get more rewards. Like you'll get a bonus couple of packs. Or if you spend like $100 on packs, you get like uh, special versions of cards. But that's only if you spend those like that amount of money. If you end up buying like the equivalent amount of packs with the lower amount, like if you just buy $15 worth of packs a couple of times, you don't get that special. You have to spend all that money up at once. So it's been known for a very long time that a Arena appeals to the whales of magic or the whales of gaming and takes advantage of people in terms of how much money they should be spending. And you know what? I'm not going to act like, you know, this isn't something other games are doing, but other games actually have a better economy than this. Notably Hearthstone. Hearthstone actually gives you now. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell you what. Hearthstone has a lot of problems with the game itself, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the economy itself. The fact that it uh, Hearthstone actually allows you to dust cards. Now, what, what does that mean? Many of you are already aware, but you essentially get to trade in your cards for an in-game currency to then use towards buying or, uh, yeah, buying or crafting 
other cards. So if you have a rare that got nerfed or, or if you have a deck that got nerfed or whatever it is and the cards aren't really that useful to you, you can dust them and it won't be a direct one-to-one -one, obviously, but you can then use that dust to craft and make other cards to put towards other decks. You can't do that on Magic Arena right now. You have to pay money into packs to get wild cards at a random chance to then use those wild cards to buy and craft new cards. So you have to spend more money to get different decks, even though balance changes change your decks, metas change, cards rotate out, you're not interested in historic, you only wanna play standard, it doesn't matter. You're not able to use the cards you currently have to buy new cards. Next up, we have the fact that people brought up why can't we put in free codes into booster packs like they do in Pokemon, where if you buy a pack in real life, you can then use a code to uh, potentially uh, renew that for something in the client. Now, they obviously have this for pre-release packs. Right? So if you go to a pre-release, you get a code, you can get that on Magic, uh, Magic Arena and you get a bunch of packs for that. People are saying, why can't you do that in, in all packs? Right? And there's no good reason for it. They're saying, oh, you know, the, like the uh, not a lot of uh, people that play a lot of paper play Arena. That That's a terrible excuse. That's a terrible excuse. They're literally just lying to themselves. They don't want to do it because of money, right? Like, think about it. People that uh, buy a lot of packs and paper, those uh, tend to be the more casual crowd. And that, that's not something that's negative. It's just a lot of people that are more enfranchised in a constructed of a, uh, formats, heck even commander, they know the singles that they want to buy. They will go to their LGS and they will buy those singles. Pack opening isn't that popular amongst enfranchised players or the majority of them. So those casual players are actually more, I would say, likely to play arena because they're looking for various formats, they're interested in various cards, and they're really fresh into the game and, and they like that pack opening feel. And if they get a bonus for it, this is gonna incentivize them to go online put in these codes and just play more of the game. The problem is they don't want that. They want your money, right? They're not understanding that in the long term, it's probably better in terms of conversion rates to get paper players onto arena with this method, keeping players buying packs in paper and then also playing arena. But again, they don't have any plan to do this. They don't have any plan for dusting and they don't have any plans to putting pa uh, like codes in packs even though it's free, they could just put them on the back of tokens. Come on, folks. We've had cards before without the magic back on them. They would have an ad and it would be a token at the front like an ad in the back. It's a thing, folks. There's no reason why you can't do that. Next up, the big reason why everyone's upset is that for they said for $50, you can you can then get a pack of, of mythic wild cards. Sorry, not mythic wild cards, just a pack of wild cards for $50 dollars for 50 us dollars you know that and that's going to matter for you know various conversion rates for people in you know south america for people in canada this is gonna be more expensive for me for people in europe wherever you might be in terms of your currency exchange rate 50 us dollars you're gonna get 12 rare wild cards and four mythic wild cards that is the biggest slap in the face i have ever seen that is the big fifty dollars for twelve rares and four mythic wild cards, and I really want to dive into this. Let's go into a tweet by pro, uh, pro player Gregors or Ehrlich. I, I apologize if I'm saying this not uh, wrong, um, but I thought this tweet was great and succinct in terms of what it was outlining. For fifty dollars, you can buy a full version of Elden Ring, Total Warhammer three, ten to fifteen cinematic. I mean, I don't know where you're getting those movie tickets. That's probably fifty dollars is probably like three movie tickets up here in Canada, so. Uh, access to any deck on moto for a month we're gonna go into that 0.8 grams of gold like cheese and then 16 cards on magic arena four rares or sorry 12 rares four mythic wild cards the economy's officially been fixed folks in terms of elden ring itself for 50 us dollars the primary game you can run through in about 50 hours 40, I would say about 30 to uh, 50 hours. People have been speed running it in 33 minutes. And all of the bonus content probably will take you 150 plus hours. If you don't know all the odds and ends, you explore everything. You don't know the cheeses and the bosses and like you, you don't know any of that. I am 40 hours in the game and maybe 30% of the way through. The amount of fun I can ha I've can i had and it will continue to have for $50 is absolutely insane. The other day, someone was talking, someone posted on the Elden Ring Reddit how they smacked a wall 50 times and they found an illusionary wall that leads into a secret area. 
That's insane. Like the the amount of content in this game that's secret, that's hidden, that's pride away that the community is continuing to find the infinite number of builds, weapons, bosses, items, everything that you get for $50 and instead you can go on arena and absolutely waste your time and get four uh, four mythic wild cards and 12 rares because guess what? That doesn't even add up to any single type of deck that you could get. Let's talk about that for a second here. If we go into the standard metagame, let's look at real life prices here. So in terms of mono white aggro, if you're buying it in paper, approximately, we're in a goldfish, $155. Just got control, $324. Ors of control, $330, you know, $330, $325, $180, $160. All right, cool. We got values, right? Okay, in terms of ticks, let's go to let's go to Moto. What's the switch here? Because this is gonna matter for rental programs. Okay, mono white aggro much more expensive, two hundred eleven. Just guy control actually only one hundred fifty. Orzov still pretty expensive. Nine enchantments, hundred dollars, like around a hundred to two hundred ticks. All right, and then around a uh, sorry around one hundred fifty to like three hundred dollars for a top tier standard deck in paper or on Moto what is this going to cost on arena well they don't have a direct buying system in terms of singles you have to get wild cards so let's look at just guy let's look at just guy combo here uh just guy control i believe that's the one i clicked eight mythics 12 rares okay let's look at that so if you buy this wild card so buy this pack so 50 dollars, you get four mythic wild cards and 12 rares okay we're about halfway there on that you buy another one that's a hundred dollars you get all eight of your mythics great 24 wild cards you're still down uh, you're still down two rares you spent a hundred dollars you're still down two rares you don't even have all the uncommons and commons none of them none of them you only get those wild cards why don't you just spend a hundred dollars on packs because you may not get actually you may not actually get all the rares and all the mythics but you will probably a very high chance of it you will get all of the you know uncommon wild cards you need you will get all the common wild cards you need and you can then use the extras to potentially put in one or two random cards as you play leagues get more gold get more packs and build up into it right like you don't even get the deck like if i spend 150 dollars, i get all the mythic wild cards i need all the rare wild cards i need to build this deck but i don't get the commons and uncommons it is literally an additive cost and you still have to buy packs that's the problem this doesn't solve the economy you still have to buy packs to get uncommon and common wild cards it only gives you mythics and rares let's look at another deck naya enchantments one mythic wild card okay easy 36 rares i have to buy 150 dollars worth of packs or sorry worth of this bundle to get enough rares to afford this deck and then i still don't have the commons and uncommons to buy this i have then spent the equivalent of the paper price for this deck and i can't even play it 150 dollars to play this in paper i have spent 150 dollars i still can't play it on arena because i don't have the uncommons or commons Talk about the ticks. I could spend $90 on, on Magic Gathering Online, play a top five standard deck through the MTGO queues and actually get money back. I can actually get ticks. I can actually get treasure chests that could potentially, if I want to sell those or open them up to get um, really cool rares or like get a chance to get anything that could price up that I could sell and then pay out of that system. I could then trade these tickets that i got to vendors such as card hoarder goat bots whatever it might be and price out that money and actually get paid in real life i can sell those tickets and they will pay me on paypal for real money i can actually price out my deck 90 tickets check it out on mana uh, on mana traders if you get the base account you get a rental limit for 15 dollars a month 15 dollars a month 125 tick rental right and that bonus goes up the longer you're with them i actually have the premium one i have the i have the the orange one here my limit's actually higher than this because i've been with them longer i've been with them for over a year and a half almost two years and my limit is much higher so you get bonuses as you can see you save a little bit of money at six months at 12 months you get more bonuses after that for 15 dollars a month i can rent this deck and a little bit more if i wanted to mess around with some of the rare slots or some of the other cards and play a top tier standard deck and get paid out for it whereas for 15 dollars a month i could i would literally get this deck within like six months by the time it rotates out it's not even important anymore 
You spend a hundred dollars, you can't. You spend one hundred and fifty dollars, you can't even play it. But for fifteen bucks a month on Magic Online, you can play this deck and get paid out for it. Now let's talk about some of the pros. Right, because I don't even want to go into what alchemy is doing in terms of like these alchemy release packs having all rares absolutely bloating up the economy and the fact that you still have to buy packs for all this stuff. We're not going into that. Let's talk about some of the pros that they try to bring up. And there's two big points that they talked about. First and foremost, they're introducing a non rotating format to the um, to the arena clients, and it's going to be in about one to two months. But wait a second, non rotating is that pioneer? Absolutely not. There is no Pioneer coming to Magic Arena still. There is still no Pioneer coming to the to this client like they've promised for over a year. They said they're halting that. And that was previously not on the stream. They said that previously. They're halting that. They're slowing down on that. They're putting more effort into. They're putting more effort into wasting our time with the economy. And then also creating a format that ain't nobody playing because they're pricing people out of it. A.K.A alchemy because they keep putting rares and putting everything at rare putting everything at mythic in all of these alchemy release sets so people can't even afford them but then they're introducing this new non-rotating format another way to play but guess what like you still can't pay yourself out from playing this you're playing a broken ladder system that doesn't even give you any skill i'm sorry like 80 percent of the decks being played on the arena ladder are not tier decks there's a bunch of people clowning around they don't know what they're doing they don't know how to like they're just a bunch of casuals literally the game truly starts at like high mythic that's where you get the tier decks because those are the people that put in the time to actually get mythic newsflash everyone if you get mythic not to put everyone down for it but it's literally just a time cost if you are if you have a 51% win rate, you will get there. It is just a time investment. That's all it is. You will come up against these random jank lists and no one knows what they're playing. That no one knows what they're doing with these lists. And they just keep going and going up these ladders. And you finally get to Mythic. And then all of a sudden, the decks become harder and harder and harder as you climb up. They're, the ladder system is absolutely dumb. And that's going to get added onto this new non-rotating -rot format that isn't on moto isn't on any of this stuff so it's another format where people aren't even going to have a good metagame to if you went on goldfish you're not even getting a metagame share of what people are playing you have to pay for external programs on websites where people put in their deck list and those websites then curate a metagame for you you don't even know what the best decks are you don't know what that stuff is because you don't have 5-0 dumps you don't have challenges you don't have any of that stuff to tell you what a metagame is so what is a top deck in historic what is a top deck in alchemy you don't know because there aren't even good constructed events to actually take advantage of this to get standings for get listings for to see what's high in the metagame you just have this dumb ladder system where casuals just play any deck they want people get to mythic and they think they're good like yo again i'm not trying to diminish you getting a mythic but it's just a time investment that's all it is unless you have a really good deck then it's less of a time investment there's no meta on the magic arena ladder until you get to high mythic that's just fact sorry about it speaking of constructed leagues they're adding the uh, well sorry i before i get into that i should mention they are adding a 1300 gold pack that it's going to be instead of the thousand gold pack that you usually get for one pack, it's going to be 1300 gold and it's going to confirm a rare or a mythic in that pack. It's going to guarantee you one. Well, guess what? How is that not predatory? Why don't you just do that with the packs right now? Like, why don't you just do that with the packs right now? Oh, right. Because it would lose it would uh what is it it would force wizards to lose money on their current investments it would make people not want to um sorry buy this new pack that you're getting people just open these oh, like why don't you just fix the economy their last solution to fixing the economy is the constructed event changes that they want to bring up now rank constructed i went over this spiel but a big thing that they want to do with the constructed uh cues and things is i believe they want to change the league constructed system on arena now a lot of people don't know this but there actually is a league system on arena there actually is a queue where you can queue in with your deck and for a, a couple hundred gold you can then 
earn gold based on how many wins you get and i believe it's about five wins total and two losses so you don't so it's not like leagues where you get kicked out at three two you can actually get up to five wins but you can do that up to the point where you get two losses and the higher up and more wins you get the more rewards you get the more gold whatever so i think what they're trying to do is then add to these rewards so that they scale better maybe more wild cards but the big thing is is they actually want to link these rewards to potential organized play now this is probably the only thing that excites me this is probably the only thing that would actually genuinely get me back to playing arena and potentially keeping franchise players in if they actually had a good link to organized play and this constructed queue system it could actually be something legitimate where if you get enough maybe five twos or maybe they add these like ticket systems like they do uh, or sorry the the qp points on moto if they add something like that to arena and if you get like five two or better multiple times you get multiple qps you can then use that to get into the uh, qualifier events or like these um competitive events where they pay you out that could actually be cool that could actually be a really cool way to incentivize an organized play system on arena that people actually work towards and that might actually be interesting so i'll give people that the problem is i highly doubt that's going to happen because wizards has already killed organized play in multiple ways so I, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Again, they have a new constructed forming out, uh, format coming out in one to two months. They have the $50 pack that is absolutely horrendous. And they potentially have a link to organized play with a change in pay structure or in reward structure to the constructed queues on Magic Arena. And that is going to be my big summary of the organized play well not the organized play stream the economy stream that they talked about on march 17 let me know what you think in the comment section down below are you still going to be playing arena after this i know i'm not and if you still are i mean convince me on it let me know why you still want to play has any of these points convinced you off or convinced you on to arena i'd love to hear your thoughts down below but other than that i hope that you guys will still continue to play magic you still got magic online and paper for that remember that even the impossible is possible and as we ponder that thought i hope you'll join me next time as we take a glimpse into the unthinkable